So hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker on a different style of video. <laughs> um, you know, if you were paying attention, I missed the week's videos and that's because we had some stressful things going on. Uh, one part around my job, which hopefully is resolved. I'm not going to count my chickens until they've been uh, hatched, reared, cooked and turned into delicious chicken tenders. Um, but yeah, so for right now, um, this is my new commute, essentially. It's, we're not fully moved yet, myself and Toaster, uh, from the Greenville area. But we are in the, But uh, basically, I just got a message from Gram Trooper, who has a new uh, channel around photography, called Replicant Studio Photography, I believe. And I, I, I shared it on, on the, the community on the channel, and he just messaged me to say thanks. You're more than welcome. Alex, my friend, um, I always am happy to support friend stuff, especially when I think it's good, and I think yours is good, so, you know, that helps. But, anyway, back to the topic at hand. So, this is my new commute, and while... Not you again, I really need to do something with this. This, like, flaps in the wind, this little flappy boy. I took it in there when it starts flapping. But yeah, this is, uh, this is it. So those of you with eyes will notice it is once again flat and rather without excitement. Um, but you know, you do what you have to do and this is the most sensible way for myself and Toaster to, to live somewhere because where we're living now is very nice. It's a very nice place. And it's actually within a lot of um, bike meetups and groups and rally and whatnot so I can get more into those communities because I miss having bike friends a lot um, the downside of that is it's what a 56 mile stint essentially well probably what 58 50 59 mile stint from my place of work so that's 120 miles per day um, the reason I'm on the CB today is not because I think it's the best bike for the job uh, because for me it's definitely not but um, it's because I'm moving this bike to the new house and I'm meeting Toaster there and then we're going back to the old house because we still have both of them rented for now. Obviously one of the leases is ending and the other lease has just started. Um, so that's that's basically what we're doing. But this, this is the new commute. So obviously I will not be aiming to make videos on this section usually, but I just wanted to show some people, I suppose, the reality of dailying uh, a bike because it's something I get asked about quite a bit, you know, is it is is dailying a motorcycle all sunshine and rainbows and I mean I thought I had complained about the flat straight roads here enough, but evidently not. Um this is part of, of, of bike riding. And you know, to answer one question that's gonna pop up, yes I still would rather be on a bike in this situation. I'm, I'm happier being on the CB, even though it is extremely hot today. It's like 36, 37 degrees Celsius, or 96 Fahrenheit, or whatever it is. And it's pretty humid at NC most of the time. Today it's not too bad, uh, but it's also not exactly like comfortable, which is actually why a naked bike is, is pleasant, because you're just being slapped by the wind, which does help a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I definitely do prefer being on a bike. Um, obviously, some considerations that will arise, and uh, this is something I've been talking to a couple of friends about and a couple of other bike friends about when I've just been discussing this um, this commute, and it's something that, you know, I do have now in my head, do I want to get, you know, a newer car, something that I want to invest in. I, well, it's the wrong, that's the wrong word. Should I invest in a newer car? Well, number one, if I'm going to be commuting in something with four wheels, I actually do care about the fuel economy. Um, I don't really care about fuel economy on bikes. It's nice when it's good, but like most bikes are pretty good on fuel anyway. So it's really not something that I, I worry about too much. Um, I mean, this bike is probably the worst out of the bikes now uh, on these type of roads. And it still averages in US terms 36, which in UK terms, uh, MPG wise say, uh, is over 40 um, it's it's I can't remember what it is in liters per hundred kilometers that's too much switcheroon in my brain while it's this hot out but it's it's not bad and that that I can tell you for a, a surety um, you know definitely 
definitely something that I would look at though is, is changing to a you know a truck or something a truck that's not bad on fuel because that would be the double edge I could also you know haul my bike somewhere um, which I, I get people in Ireland have messaged me been like oh, I never thought I'd hear you say that after I mentioned it in a video but you have a lot of this in America and I'll be honest this is not something I set out to, to ride on a bike on purpose um, I'll actually cut back when we're off the 70 mile an hour section because it's probably going to be really windy on the microphone I actually think this 70 zone might go on for longer than I thought it did uh, I haven't really driven this way much <laughs> so we'll, we'll get back to it but you know is this the type of road that I set out intentionally to do if I'm not going to work absolutely not um, but I mean it is a road that it, you know it's, it's a fact of life for most people in the world so I do think it's also worthwhile you know talking about in reviews which is which is why I always try to include uh, you know like a, a, a talk about a motorway section in my my commuter reviews um, which I will be doing a commuter review on this bike and on the V-Stram and eventually on the Z900 RS when I use it enough I, I feel like I've done enough on this one now um, to definitely talk about it and it is it's a perfectly capable bike uh, for honestly anyone of any size because when you're only doing 60 miles one way even as cramped as i am on this bike and i'm not bad it's a perfectly capable machine and that kind of brings me on to why i'm more and more every day understand the lure of the big touring bike the big hurley davidson the big indian motorcycle honda valkyrie that may be a hint uh we won't we won't talk more about that i might even cut it i don't know uh, you know but those style of bikes the big 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 bruisers that have wind protection torque for days you're sat back and comfortable i i get them more and more the more i ride in america because even the the twisty roads over here and and too many people who watch these videos take this as like a slight as an insult I am not insulting your road system. You have a very effective road system. I'm insulting the lack of imagination behind some of them. And the fact that most of them are built to accommodate like big trucks and vehicles. Uh, well, not even a, I'm not even insulting that. It's just kind of like, it's a pity there aren't more narrow twisty roads like exist in Ireland, in my opinion. I think the, the best of both worlds should exist really and truly, you know what I mean? But unfortunately, roads generally are not designed and built with joy in mind so you end up with this which is a very effective transportation system for cars i i'm yet to price out a train journey anywhere but i eventually will anyway the point being is i do get the allure of the big tour and i've literally been looking quite a lot at you know newer vehicles recently especially trucks and the Toyota Tacoma still rules my mind, even though they're very expensive. But honestly, most vehicles are expensive these days. And I mean, when you consider what you're paying for, I think uh, a Toyota Tacoma weighed against the Harley Davidson CEO is uh, CBO. Well, number one, it's cheaper um, if you buy the, the reasonably priced models. And, it, you know, it's you're getting a lot more metal and, and, and practicality for your money. However, a bagger and it's it's something that kills me because a, a, a good friend of mine uh, an internet friend of mine who i have not yet met in real life but i hope to change that soon flinch uh, john he tried to convince me to go all in and just invest in an electric light standard when i first moved here and he was probably right uh which which hurts me to admit but if i paired the V-Strom together with the Suburban and all the maintenance I put into the Suburban, it would have probably equaled out around about there or thereabouts with an elect electric light standard. Could I have made all the trips that I have made in the Suburban? Probably not, especially when you consider, you know, toasters. But sister visited recently in the Suburban, did a, a great job for that. The space was definitely needed. Uh, especially you know carrying a cooler and equipment and whatever else all the stuff that we were we were using for that holiday or vacation for for the uh, americans in the audience but if it was just me and toaster i think probably uh you know two up on on the hardy would be absolutely fine 
you know, to carry all the luggage we need for the type of holidays we go on. Maybe Toaster wouldn't be delighted around the lack of, 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 of space for storing hiking equipment, but, you know, I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> now, I actually like hiking, but it takes a lot out of me because I'm a big... I'm a big guy, so hauling myself up several mountains in a week, uh, it gets it gets unsurprisingly tiring. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is the bulk of the new commute. It's just kind of flat, open roads with not a whole pile to see. I have held off doing a Rever review specifically because of this. So at some point. When I have time after work and I'm not rushing home for anything, I'm going to do a couple of twisty routings on the Rever app since I paid for it. And we're going to see how it does because honestly up until now I have not been impressed. I will, I will say that out loud that so far Rever will be on the back foot for impressing me. Is my 360 cam not turned on? Oh, maybe it is. Probably just the sun. But that's something the Rever is gonna is gonna be tested for, and then I will make the final review, the finale review. That makes no sense. The final review, and um, we'll see how it does. But that's kind of where where I'm at. Is like that. I'm really starting to consider a touring bike more, uh, especially maybe used in a used Harley, because I think cruising to work would just be easy on it they're good on fuel maintenance is relatively easy and i mean they they hold the resale pretty well especially harley's and I, I probably would change it after a couple of years because you know i like i like changing bikes but um yeah that's kind of that's kind of where i am at as as a thought process let me know what you think do you think i should go for the toyota tacoma i'm trying to stick with all those fancy financial people of you know don't spend more than 10% of your monthly income or up to 20% total for all of your travel requirements in a car uh, bikes don't count because they're my hobby so yeah let me know let me know what you think let me know what you would do it's I would not mind having something that was more fuel efficient than the Suburban and also can I can put a motorcycle in the back of in case we are doing another trip that requires me not to be able to use a bike because um, it hurts my soul it really it really does not being able to just have a bike where i want to go on trips it always has it always has as far back as when me and toaster went to spain years ago and we were in tarragona uh, on the roads that the tarragona rally is on and it just it just it killed me a little bit not to have a bike there because I mean, that's, that's the place you want to bike, right? So I think the best of both worlds is to be able to accommodate the people who don't want to ride a bike everywhere while also having your bike so you can, you know, drop them off wherever they want to be and then you shoot away on the bike. That's, that's kind of the dream. Well, let me know what you think. As always, all opinions are appreciated. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you, what you think you would do. And just to get it out there, I absolutely adore my 1999 1999 Suburban that I know some of you have seen on the channel um, but on the unfortunate fact of the matter is it drinks too much fuel for doing this commute every day and I have put quite a lot of work into it maintenance wise to, to, to keep it to a standard that's that's you know reasonable and I mean stuff still breaks in it all the time it's an older vehicle and I'll be honest I don't really enjoy working on four-wheel vehicles that much. Uh, I probably would if I had someone near me who, you know, wanted to sit in the garage and shit talk a little bit. Um, I always like working on two-wheel vehicles. That's... I don't know why. My brain just enjoys it. It's actually relaxing to me. Whereas four-wheel vehicles, not so much. Uh, I don't find that as relaxing. Um, and it's not, it's not because I don't have a secondary mode of transport. I do have a secondary mode of transport, so... If something takes more than one day, it's it's really not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, I mean, let me know what you think. Uh, as I said, always interested in everyone's opinion. Um, I'm not saying I follow it, but I do think right now, if I was to go and shell out a lot of money on a newer vehicle, it would be a Toyota Tacoma. Yeah, I don't know. 
the whole car market is still kind of crazy over here crazy well more expensive than i feel it should be especially with interest rates and unfortunately i i am not the type of person who is flush enough to be able to afford a new or relatively new toyota tacoma all cash that's uh that is a pipe dream for me and then on the flip side should i just suck it up and ride the wheels off stromboli because i would like to buy a house at some point in my life um oh, how did you come loose but yeah let me know let me know everyone and let me know what you think of the new commute i mean when it's sunny it's not bad this is look like i said for people in bigger countries this is just a fact of life um you know paddy outback has done some phenomenal rides and a lot of them have been very straight and he still made excellent videos out of them so i hope to be able to emulate that someday too and also to point out one last time uh, paddy outback's whole advice of just cover as much of your skin as possible in hot weather is something i took to heart and i follow and i've never had an issue riding over here even in like extreme what i would consider extreme heat for most people obviously i'm sure some people would be like ha ha you mean you don't ride on the surface of the sun <laughs> you don't even know heat kind of like you know when when normal people who live in normal habitable places are like oh hey it was cold today and you have someone who like battles polar bears every day and literally eats icicles for breakfast it's like pa you do not know cold until you have lived in the frozen tundra of iceland Oh wait, Iceland is actually a place. I didn't mean actual Iceland there. I'm not, that's not aimed at Icelandic people. It's aimed at people who live in cold places. But yeah, that's uh, that's the end of my ramble. Let me know what you think. Obviously this is not somewhere I will try to make a lot of videos on because it, from a viewpoint, it's not that exciting. From a visual point. I also do like those Dodge Rams. But everyone I've talked to about a Dodge Ram except one person has warned me off Dodge Rams or whatever they're called now ram rams ram 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 the ram ram 1500 but yeah let me know all advice is appreciated and i would ideally like to stick with a truck or a van i was also kind of looking at golf gti's because i miss manual transmissions um but at the end of the day i don't think i'd have much of a use for a golf gti aside from commuting I wouldn't do a track day on it because I want to do track days on motorcycles. Uh, it can't pull anything, it can't haul anything. So, while yes, it would be good on fuel, I think I would just I would just use Stromboli in, in, in place of a car. Um, I think that that's honestly the sensible decision from my life viewpoint and how I carry out my life say. But yeah, let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. That's the last time I'll ask that. And yeah, until next time. Thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons. I appreciate you all. Especially for sticking with me when I get a little bit uh, broken mentally. Um, some people know that the last, the last couple of weeks have been difficult. But I think we're good now. I think we're through it. So I do appreciate you all. You're all legends. And yeah, until next time. Thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew, what would you do? Would you buy a truck? Or would you just suck it up, drive the Suburban on very bad weather days and keep your bikes? Which uh, is likely, honestly, it's the most likely outcome. I'm probably just gonna keep the Suburban, only drive it when really it's not advisable to ride a bike. And uh, yeah, just, just deal with it that way. That's, I'm cheap. When it comes to four-wheel vehicles, I don't like buying them. So that's that's the most likely resultant of this whole discussion. But let me know what you think. Let me know what you would do. Bye, Outro Crew.